Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to talk about the arguably niche subject of hard drive shucking. Now there are a small contingent of you that may want to float down to that YouTube report button because I just swore I didn't trust me. Today we want to talk about shucking. That is when you get an external enclosure that arrives with a hard drive or an SSD inside and you decide you know what I'm going to save myself a bit of bunt rather than buying a bare drive and going for an enclosure and ripping out the hard drive or SSD inside and thereby saving a few quid. And now hard drive shucking and you know SSD shucking to a degree but I think it would be fair to say that the bulk of shucking happens on hard drives has been around for many many years however in more recent years it has become a little bit more niche largely because the parity in terms of pricing between external enclosures and bare drives has the margin has closed significantly however there is still times when the pricing of maybe the availability of individual standalone hard drives particularly in the larger capacities um, is significantly higher than those of enclosures because the enclosures those drives have been purchased in bulk in the past at a time when the fluctuating sale and demand of hard drives hasn't been quite as potent as it is at the moment so you end up with a situation where someone like Lacey who is associated with Seagate will have a bunch of enclosures full of hard drives already that were purchased at least internally with their own internal economy six to twelve months prior whereas the individual drives that are available for sale at 16 18 and 20 tb are a lot more subject to the general to and fro and sale of demand of drives one classic example would have been chia from a year year and a half ago and its enormous impact on the availability and pricing of standalone hard drives and i think that was when the conversation about hard drive shucking really came back into the domain so today i'm going to go through three reasons why you should consider shucking a hard drive or ssd from one of the many enclosures available on the market when they arrive pre-populated and three reasons why you might want to definitely avoid that for lots of those reasons but let's crack on with number one Now this may seem a bit obvious, half the reason for shucking is because it's cheaper to go for the shuck drive sometimes than the bare drive, but I think there's actually a lot more to it, because there are many, many examples online, particularly with the WD My Book series, they are generally the most egregious example uh, between buying the drive bare and getting the drive in an enclosure, but there's lots of examples where not only is the drive cheaper, but often if you purchase the enclosure and the drive separately it would actually cost if not the same but a little less and in many examples such as going for a 14 tb drive and buying an external usb enclosure if you're prepared to put up with a powered enclosure you can often get the enclosure ultimately for free it isn't even just the saving but you get the enclosure thrown in for free within that bundled price but it doesn't even stop there because sometimes when you look at enclosures from the likes of gtech or lacy that have got all those drives inside the more drives you go for such as going for a 16 20 or a 24 tb device where there's multiple drives inside those enclosures get even more impressive with thunderbolt enclosures too where the more storage you go for, the less you're paying for the enclosure overall, where you actually reach a tipping point where the enclosure is free. And some of them, as I say, being Thunderbolt 3 enclosures, really do make up that saving becoming an tremendous gain overall. And then you've got devices that include software as well. So going back to Sabrent here, a lot of both their uh, external SSDs and internal SSDs in some cases arrive with free Acronis backup and restoration software. There's even um, editing suite software included with the likes of GTEC and Lacey in some cases, rolled in with the cost of the enclosure, which as we just highlighted in some cases ends up ultimately being free when you buy the drive within that enclosure versus buying the bare drive on its own so it isn't just about the saving it's actually about the overall value of what you're getting too Now this point often gets overlooked because you have to be looking for specific kinds of storage media but a lot of the time when it comes to hard drive and SSD shucking there are still multiple examples of drives which are either impossible to buy bare or 
are really cost prohibitive because they're not made en masse and therefore their pricing online is significantly higher. And it just comes down to a case of knowing the internal drives that go inside them, of which there are several uh, websites you can go to to find out about that. I'll hopefully link for those in the comments afterwards. But for example, if you wanted to go for a two and a half inch hard drive, remember not SSD, but two and a half inch hard drive of between four and five TB, those hard drives are actually surprisingly hard to find and they're not produced anywhere near as much as they used to be with a lot of retailers either doing drop shipping or holding very small quantities and that's because the bulk of those drives go directly to enclosures they go directly to external drives where people want a nice portable two and a half inch drive that fits in their laptop bag for work and again that goes i think there were three tb drives that may have stopped producing those but certainly the four and the five tb drives at 15 millimeter height are easier to find in enclosures and often work out cheaper as well the same goes for a low power or classified green drives i know wd green rolled out as a brand and they've kind of got rid of that but there's still a lot of low power drives um, X Hitachi or um, HGST type drives, these drives also are kind of only available in the external enclosures, and a lot of those can be found secondhand online, even though the drives themselves have been barely used. Same goes for 3 TB drives and 1.5 TB drives. For those of you that have got existing older generation RAID enclosures where you may have a drive that you want to replace, and they just simply don't make those drives anymore, but you can find the external um uh, enclosures online with those drives inside still available at second hand stores and then finally you've got OEM drives original equipment manufacturer drives and these are drives that either are not available for sale at all but they're only produced by the brand for, as like an OS drive or something or you buy a pre-made computer or a tablet or a phone where that drive inside is made by a third party which isn't available for resale, but it goes inside as an overall packaged client device. That OEM drive is either impossible to find online or then it is available on drive is a special order now they may be a drive that you're trying to replace in an existing system and shucking is really the only way you can get hold of it because that oem drive is then found in off-branded or low-cost external solutions so that's another great reason where drive shucking can be an option for stum and why it still exists Now this last one definitely applies more to SSDs than it does to hard drives and it's massively overlooked in some cases and that is that because of the improvement in external connectivity and predominantly I'm talking probably slightly less so about Thunderbolt but certainly about USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabits per second we're finding that external enclosures can't really get away with hard drives anymore because you end up with an external connection again usb 3.2 gen 2 of 1000 megabytes per second potential bandwidth and if they produce a drive that promises that it's taken advantage of that 1000 megs a lot of the time they've got to put a drive inside that is able to hit that benchmark something that two and a half inch and even three and a half inch hard drives of mechanical design still cannot do so you end up with drives like this this is the sandisk extreme pro and this has got an m2 nvme inside so the result is that even though it has that type c connector there and this is capable of outputting a thousand megabytes per second read write the SSD inside, which by the way is a WD Black SN750, thank you the SSD review who did a big breakdown take a part of this, check out the article below, that SSD inside this is capable of 3000 megabytes per second, depending on the capacity you choose, the 1, the 2 and I think the 4TB all hit 3000 over 3000, the smaller one doesn't, but still nonetheless that means the SSD inside here is three times faster than the interface slapped on the end. So one of the reasons why I'm wrecking the joint is that you might want to shuck a drive so you can take advantage of the drive inside and it's higher performance. But it's not all perfect. There's going to be lots of reasons why shucking an external drive like this one isn't going to be for everyone. So let's talk about the three reasons why you may not want to go for an external drive and shucking the hell out of that media.
Yes, warranty. It was always going to be the first one there, but I think we do have to maybe expand on that topic. It comes as no surprise that in most cases, if you shuck a drive out of an external enclosure, you have knackered your official warranty there. Now, that the reason I say it's in most cases true is we have to kind of open up into that. What I mean is, say for example, all of these drives here on the table that arrive with a storage drive inside, if you were to open them up, pull out the drive, and then utilize that drive elsewhere outside of the enclosure, yes, it would invalidate the manufacturer's warranty because you're utilizing the drive outside of what they have claimed to be supportable for you in your purchase. Now, that might not be the case with the e-retailer you purchased through. Now, what I mean by that is maybe you've bought the drive, you tried testing out, you've gone, oh, this isn't working out. You put it all back together and send to that manufacturer uh, to your e-retailer. Now, then you're at the behest of their own policies. Now, whether that comes down to you've broke the seal on a device, whether that comes down to within your 14 days return policy, again, it can differ around the world. This is where there is that gray area. But I can tell you in most cases, when you go directly to manufacturer, they are going to give you the big no. Because when it comes to hardware warranty, particularly when you contact them rather than the e-retailer, it's often the case that you're doing that because you're outside of the standard 14, 30 day return policy of all your different retailers. Now, this subject actually expands even further when you find out that the drive you may have inside a lot of these enclosures, that you may have been purchasing a drive, because, uh, an external enclosure, because you've been told online that it has an Ultrastar drive inside, or maybe a Seagate Exos inside, or a Pro Series drive inside, in order to hit those uh, performance benchmarks. Again, Lacey and GTEC, classic examples of that. If you buy those devices and shuck the drives out to take advantage of them elsewhere, not only are you losing out on that warranty in a lot of cases, but worse still, if you were to buy that drive retail, you may have got a five-year warranty if you'd bought it bare. Whereas now you bought the same drive and not only only got three years of warranty on some enclosures despite the five-year warranty drive inside, and again, that's rare where those two meet. But on top of that, if you invalidate that warranty, you're losing out on five years, which may have been offset, at least for peace of mind's sake, if you just bought the bare drive anyway. This next one is one I don't think gets spoke about enough online, and this is to do with the actual interface of the external enclosure versus the interface of the drive inside. Now, take for example, this enclosure here. This is a standard NVMe ruler enclosure. If we slide that out inside, remove that cooling, we find a kind of bare bones OEM drive inside there. Now that OEM drive inside there is connected to an M2 NVMe connector, as you can see, and that M2 NVMe rolls out into that USB Type-C. So if I've removed that M2 NVMe, I've got myself an M2 NVMe drive, lovely jubbly. However, what about this WD Passport drive here? What we'll do is we'll shut that out of there, and again, don't be as careless as I'm about to be when shucking a drive. There are lots of ways to do this a lot better than the way I am doing it, but I'm speeding it up for you guys here on camera. So get that out of there, break that out of the casing, remove the case. We can see that drive inside there, but you may have started to see the problem, and that is that some drives, because manufacturers have started to become aware of shucking, go out of their way to change the default connector on a drive. Now, sometimes you get a drive where the interface is a secondary board underneath the drive that's slotted over the SATA connection. Unfortunately, this is a connector that is directly attached to that board, and it's soldered on with that USB Type B, USB 3 connector there. As you can see, there isn't an overlap on top of there. Indeed, if I bring this closer, you're able to see that this isn't a case of them just slotting it over the top. That is a completely modified interface there. So if you were to shut that drive, although you can see the drive there at the top, being that 750 original Black Series drive, they've modified the end. And consequently, if you shut this, you're not going to be able to interface this with a SATA. Again, there are some drives in the market where this interface on the top is kind of 
a secondary panel attached to the top. Unfortunately, this is an example not of that. So do bear in mind when chucking that sometimes the interface on the drive has been purposefully modified to stop it being used outside of that enclosure. And also, by opening it and the marks you may have left, you may have invalidated the warranty anyway. So it could be a double worst scenario. This leads to our last problem with shucking and one that I think unfortunately is inevitable and that is that unlike when it comes to buying an external drive, say a WD Red or a Seagate Ironwolf, where the external drive has a commitment to those data sheets and what the drive is capable of and the drive itself, when it comes to external enclosures, brands very rarely publish the drive that's inside, which can lead to two splintered issues. One, you have to find resources online where people have shucked to those drives already to tell you the drive that's inside for certain. Great stuff. However, a lot of brands, and WD are probably more than anyone uh, cap um, uh, guilty of this, to swapping out of the drives inside during a product's run. The WD MyBook series has seen them all. I have seen red drives in there. I've seen Ultrasar drives in there. I have seen uh, black series drives in there. I have seen blue series drives. I have seen all of the gamut of WD drives inside in external enclosures in the MyBook series. And in that time, I've seen changes within the same series too. Now, as long as the drive inside can hit the performance benchmarks promised by the enclosure, they're fine as long as durability is maintained and performance is maintained, the brand doesn't have to highlight the drive that's inside, leading to a lot of cases where people will go out and see that and, and my book has got eight TB drives inside. They look online, they find a Reddit or a forum post or some, something that, you know, nine, 12 months ago, maybe two years, said inside the drive inside there was a WD Black 8 TB. They get it, they open it up, and it's a Red Pro or it's a blue drive in there. So it's one of the inevitable issues with buying those external drives for shucking that the drive inside there is no commitment by the brand to maintain the drive in there they just need to maintain the durability and the performance promised by that drive inside and remember because of the overhead of the external interface a lot of the time they might put a drive inside much like we saw the wd black inside this where even though the drive inside may be you know significantly better than the interface when you see it promised online and in other Reddit posts or something, even though at that time you may think, cool, there's a great drive inside, there's nothing stopping WD down the line going, well, we don't need to start putting WD blacks inside these, pop a blue in there, hell, stick a WD green for the hell of it. And there's nothing stopping that happening. And that is particularly egregious when we start to see um, brands introduce with single drive enclosures more use of SMR based drives in there, shingled magnetic recording for those drives that are designed for single use deployments because in those scenarios there is time for that shingled mechanic of data write to realign itself during the downtime. Those of you that are shucking external um, enclosures because you're going to be utilizing multiple of those drives in a raid may not know or may find out the hard way that what they thought was CMR, PMR turns out to be a bunch of SMR drives. But this has been should you shuck external drives, the good and the bad? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe you've got success stories. Maybe you think I'm being a big old worry wart. Let me know below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I'll try and do a breakdown article below uh, regarding all the points in today's video. And again, if you've enjoyed it, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. Use the free advice section linked um, in the description over to Nas Compares and the free community support forum. And if this video has helped you, you've enjoyed it in any way, and if you were going to shop at Amazon anyway, why not use the links in the description to take you there? Because if you do that, it costs you nothing extra, it will take you there, and anything, and I mean anything you buy, results in a small kickback coming back here to NAS Compares. It is literally just me and Eddie here, and that little contribution allows us to keep doing what we do thanks to passive support in that way. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.